Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out some of the newest features added in Unreal Engine 5.3, which is support for importing large landscapes into the engine as well as nanite enabled landscapes. So we're going to be taking a look at the new world building tools that are inside Unreal Engine 5.3. It feels like it's been ages since Epic has updated the landscape system in Unreal Engine. I mean, can't remember the last update for the landscape system. It had to be all the way back in Unreal Engine 4. But hopefully now that they've established some of the other features like nanite and lumen, we can start seeing updates to things like the landscape system, hopefully even the water system, since they haven't touched that since they released it in 4.26. But yeah, like I said, we're going to be checking out the new world building tools, nanite landscapes, and the newly added support for importing large landscape height maps. Now, before we get into the video, I want to really quickly tell you about my multiplayer survival game course. There's over 50 plus hours of course content. In this course, you will learn how to make things like a drag and drop inventory system, a complete crafting system where you can craft all sorts of different items, a harvesting system where you can chop down any tree rock or bush that you see on the map. We create nine unique weapons and tools, things like a rocket launcher, pickaxe, hatchet, rifle. We create an entire building system where you can build your own bases using foundations, walls, ceilings, and you can upgrade your base from wood to then stone and then to metal. This course is currently in early access, but if you enroll today, you'll get a big early access discount. The price of this course will be raised later on, but if you enroll now, you'll get access to the entire course and all future lectures that will be added. So take your game development skills to the next level by enrolling in this course. The link will be in the description below, or you can head over to smartpoly.teachable.com to check out the course. So yeah, here we are in this level that I created. So basically I use world partition and I imported this tiled landscape. I showed this off in my previous video, everything you need to know about Unreal Engine 5.3. Basically I imported this tiled landscape. This is actually a map that I created here on the channel. You can actually still go to the video and download the project files, the height maps, all that stuff from it. Although I haven't updated it to Unreal Engine 5. Anyways, I took the height maps and I've imported it into Unreal Engine 5.3. There is a total of 99, two 2017 by 2017 resolution tiles and the overall size is about 20 square kilometers and so the new feature update for large landscape import and export supposedly it's been updated to support very large landscape resolutions by leveraging world partition and splitting the import operation into several successive batches now when I imported it I didn't really have any issues importing the landscape into Unreal Engine 5.3 like I said this is a total of 99 2k resolution tiles so I'd love to test this out with the even a larger map but this is still pretty big as you can see here so you can see me flying around the level and one thing I noticed new inside of here is that they've added this new landscape region system so I'm not entirely sure what that is they don't really have any documentation or stuff on that yet I think that's a new feature but it's not even shown in the roadmap but another new thing is this new world partition visualizer so you can see the actual grid size of world partition so basically each cell size or grid size is a little chunk and all the actors within that chunk will be loaded and streamed out using world partition. And so you can see you can change the loading range there and that will change the overall radius of how far everything will load around you. So obviously the larger you make it, the more farther out you'll be able to see things. But yeah, like I said, this is a 20 square kilometer map, so it's not really that big. I really wanna test this out with 100 square kilometer map. So I'm gonna need to bust out the old terrain generation software and create myself a height map to test this out because in Unreal Engine 5.0, all the way to 5.2, importing any sort of large resolution height map or even a lot of tiled landscapes. The process would just crash or you just run out of memory because of how resource intensive it is. But importing this landscape, I didn't really have any issues with it. So I'm thinking that they've solved the problem. But, but like I said, I'd love to try this with an even larger map, more tiles and a higher resolution. Now, the other feature that I tested was nanite enabled landscapes. And so this feature, if you select your landscape, you'll see that there's a little button to to enable nanite and this actually is also in 5.2 maybe even be in 5.1 but i haven't seen anywhere in the roadmap where they publicly announced adding this feature other than in 5.3 where they announced that nanite can now be enabled on landscape actors so i went ahead and tried this out and enabled nanite and clicked build data so basically what this is supposed to do is build all the nanite landscape meshes now this process is very buggy basically i crashed a couple of times just trying to do this process and it took quite a while. So I had to test this on a smaller map that I created here. This is just a three by three tiled landscape. So a total of nine tiles. And it took at least, you know, 10, 15 minutes to bake the nanite meshes. And I believe that's because you're taking this 
landscape mesh, which is dynamic. You know, you can sculpt the landscape, you can add things like rivers and all that stuff. It's taking this dynamic mesh and converting it into a static mesh and then building the nanite on top of that. So at least that's what I'm guessing why the process takes quite a while. But likewise, I did crash a couple of times just trying to build the data. But once it's built here, you can see I enabled the triangles mode so we can see all the triangles on the landscape here. And yeah, just look at all the triangles there. So I can go back into the let mode and you can see the detail, all the little erosion on these hills. I think Nanite Landscapes is good for this because you can see, especially with height maps, where you have these little eroded parts in the terrain, even off in the distance, you can still see all of that detail because of the Nanite triangles, rather than using you know a traditional landscape LOD, where you can sort of see this low poly landscape mesh off in the distance. With Nanite Landscapes, you don't really see any of that, but rather Rather, you can see all of the detail, the shading, the lighting on the terrain, and it just looks so much better. But yeah, this map is a 9x9 tiled landscape, and I imported this ocean plugin from Unreal Engine 5.2. I actually updated it myself to 5.3. But yeah, as you can see, we can pan in and out from the landscape. And if you just focus on one point off in the distance, you're not really seeing any sort of pop in and out of, of LODs and it doesn't look like there's any detail being lost as you move away. Now I did have bugs with trying to save this, like it wouldn't save the Nanite mesh after I built it. So like I said, it's still very early, it's still very buggy. However, they didn't really specify in the roadmap that this feature was experimental. But I mean, it's Epic Games. Pretty much every new feature that they add is experimental. But as I was saying, I definitely need to try this out with a larger landscape height map, specifically tiled height maps, because I still don't think importing a single height map at, you know, 30K resolution or 60K resolution or just some insane resolution scale as a single file is a good idea. I still think tiled landscapes are the way to go. But if anyone else tests this with a larger landscape tile setup than what I have shown in the video, let me know down in the comments down below because I'm interested to see what the results are, especially how long it takes to import and all that stuff. Now playing around with World Partition, I really haven't touched World Partition since Unreal Engine 5.0 since it was introduced and it seems like they're adding new stuff like there's these landscape regions. I'm not sure what these are but they are these big collision boxes that are inside of the level that get automatically placed when you import your height map. So I'm not sure if these have to do with loading specific actors or something like that but that's definitely something new that has changed or has been added in 5.3. I really hope with these new updates to the landscape system that Epic will revisit things like the water system, the ocean, the lakes, and all that stuff. They released it all the way back in Unreal Engine 4.26 and and I've used it in my projects, but it just doesn't seem like it's getting any sort of updates or they haven't really touched it since they released it. But I'm curious what you guys think down in the comments down below. What do you guys think about some of these new features added into Unreal Engine 5.3? Do you want to see more updates to the landscape system, the water system, and these world building tools? Or are you more focused on maybe other things like they're adding like the skeletal mesh editor? Let me know down in the comments down below. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I just want to showcase some of the things that I tested out here. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.